Our first one today is Costa, and he's sitting over here. And I would like to welcome Costa. I'm not going to read about Costa, but I think you all know Costa from his passion, for one. If, if we could describe, we'll put some vocabulary around you, Costa. <laughs> he spoke about that last night, didn't he? So who would like to contribute a word that would describe Costa? Passionate? Driven? Has anyone got a word? Come on, you saw him last night in action. Innovative. Enthusiastic. Enthusiastic. Creative. What was that one? What was it? What was it? Composed. Composed. He's coming out to get you. Watch out. And he's hiding. Yes? Compostarian. That's a new word for us all to use. I'm a compostarian. I'm not a librarian. I'm a compostarian. So, as I say, reading a script about Costa is too defining. It's too, too many boundaries, Hugh. See, look at this. When you start thinking outside the square, we're going to put, not put boundaries around Costa because I think that limits what he, his, he... Well, it's not even his potential for change because he's actually doing the change and he's supporting farmers and he's out there and with his presence that he has in the media, um, it's, he's preaching and he's out there behind it. So, you know, as he says, you know, the world is a garden. You know, we just can't say we're farmers and they're growing, gar they're growing veggies or a house garden. It's all about it. So I don't want to put Costa in a box <laughs> because he, he wouldn't fit in that box. He'd break out. So I'd like to welcome Costa to uh, come up and present now. And uh, when he gets... Let, oh, hang on, I'll get his slides up first. It's interesting trying to do both IT and this as well, but I'm su I've survived two days. I'm sure I'll get to this day. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had a bit of a scare this morning because I do a regular um, radio slot. Where's Owen? Is Owen here? Is, 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 is. Yeah, there he is. Um, he came in from the farm with me. and So I was lying in bed and I, the phone didn't have any reception. I forgot to tell the phone to wake wake me up and so all of a sudden it was like it was quarter to seven I was going oh I'm supposed to because I speak to Gold Coast Radio every Friday morning and sort of do a little bit of a chat about what's coming up on the show and so on and then I, I go oh there's no reception and I was trying to find a landline and I rang in and they said oh no it's it's, it's only sent quarter to six up here <laughs> 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 so, so anyway we were driving out, driving in and they rang in because it was about quarter to eight and um yeah, it's just nice because I don't actually have a prescriptive, uh, this week I'm doing this and this week Jerry's going there. Because but, but, then that just becomes like, oh, oh yeah. So we just chat, chitter chatter. But then midway through he says, oh, you know, is there any, what, what, what are you doing? And I just brought up one point. I said, oh, I'm actually walking around the Cooks River with an absolutely mad Italian talking about wild food and weeds and edible weeds and how... It's just edible plants, it's not weeds. So it's nice that, and, and Arne sort of brought it up, which was great because he's just observing it. He's in the passenger seat listening to me rabbit on on loudspeaker. And he said, oh, that, that's great that, you know, this just folded in there. So people are driving around the coast up there and, and weeds, different concept. And as I did in the show when we did a segment on it, I said, you know, we've got to take our weed goggles off and actually look at these as plants. And when we do that, we change our perspective. But anyway, I digress. Um, great to be here. Uh, I suppose what I wanted to start off with was uh, really just touch on that whole point of um, something that I mentioned last night. We go about our business, we move around. We travel, we, you know, John, you were in Canberra uh, sorry, not Canberra, Goulburn last night. We, we, we travel through landscapes, we travel through country and uh, for anyone who might have flown here, it's just like ping, ping. We drive over land and we just get where we're going. And I think everything that we're talking about here is a constant build in our understanding of land and our understanding of what makes the land tick. And if we actually just take note of where we are, and I mean, you guys as a whole, you guys and girls as a whole, I mean, you, you have an understanding of land. When I'm talking to people in the city, I say, where do you live? And they go, oh, in 
Zetland. I go, yeah, where do you live? Yeah, in, in Sydney. Yeah, but where do you live? Oh, on Elizabeth Street. Yeah, but where do you live? And that connection is not there. Like, it's just, I'm, I'm pushing a button, but there's no connection until I say, yeah, but, and they go, I live in a house. I go, yeah, but where's the house? I said, it's on the, and then they go, it's on the street. I go, yeah, but, the street is on a landscape. And whereabouts in the landscape? Are you at the top of the hill? Are you in the middle of the hill? Are you at the bottom of the hill? I, come out, I go to jobs, they go, oh, we've got a drainage problem. I arrive there, it's a cul-de-sac at the bottom of the hill just going, please, come to me, water. But people don't have that connect. And having just spent some time in Catherine, we did a special. Uh, I don't know, for those of you that don't know the show, like going into the ABC, my big goal for, for at least the first series was to get four specials up. And the specials, the first one was Future of Farming, Our Connection to Land. And I mean, putting that to a gardening show, what do you mean? That's landline. And I say, no, 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 no. You know, and, and I had to work around that. I had to say, well, well, no, if the world's a garden, then farming is the kitchen garden of the city. <laughs> so we're going to do it. So then I said, OK, next, connect. What's Indigenous connection to land? That's an entire university. It's an entire encyclopedia of unknown volumes of information that we haven't even scratched the surface. So we did that. The third one, I said, well, what's immigrant connection to gardening and farming? And how has that enabled them to connect to a new country? And then the fourth one, which we're about to do, in two weeks is the final one, which is about harvest and celebration. But the point I'm making about the welcome is that we, did, we went up to Catherine and the connection and the experience that I got there with a welcome to country, you, you realise that, I mean, we are working on the top surface of the land. Our connection is, as farmers, your connection is deeper than most people. And I deal with most people more than you guys and girls. So to see and to connect to that indigenous understanding of land has now given me an even stronger purpose to explain that and share that. And to have a welcome to country where, you know, there's an understanding. And, and when I talk about gardening the soil and the soul, we need to explore that soul connection more. And that's not doing these ones. It's got nothing to do with that. We're living. We're living. The soil's living. We need to nurture that living. And from a soul point of view, well, that, that's all about purpose and presence. And to be on that land and have a welcome to country in Catherine with elders up there was an experience that I'll never forget. And without going right into it, as far as the moment when, when that happened, the, the, a ripple came out of the ground and just came straight up through me. And I don't know if anyone saw it on the TV. I just had to turn to the cameraman at that point and say, uh, just film this, because I could feel something was happening. And it just came up through me. Now, you may or may not understand that, but it happened. And it was like this incredible emotion of welcome, so that Yes, that's a word, but I felt it as a, as a real thing. And I, and I mean, it was very intimate. It was very intimate, but I'm, I mean, I'm there to make and share information. So I just had to tap the camera and I say, just, just film, just whatever. I don't know what's going to happen. And then I started to talk to him and then it just went and I started crying. It wasn't a sad cry. It was just like a and um, Margaret Catherine, the, the senior elder up there, she talked to me about it and she said that you know that's that is the spirit of the land saying you are welcome here and to have that experience with these elders who are passing on their experience to the young girls on this particular station they're setting up a program where they're setting up a, a baton change for the young girls and and they talk about the land they talk about trees as part of the family 
So my point here is that is connection. That is not in the brain, that's in the heart and the soul and the land. She went to pick a seed pod off a plant to give to me to take to the kindergarten where we were building a garden. She asked permission from the plant. That to me made that whole episode of going up there with flights and six hotel rooms for everyone and hiring vehicles and transport and logistics and editing and palava, 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 palava. That one example says something about how we look at all this, how we look at all those stats on the page and say, what does it mean on the ground? What does it mean with our connection to the ground? Because ultimately that's what this is about. It's about rebuilding the life into the land and the life into us that comes from the land. So there is no separation. It's not about buying in some artificial this is about a connection to the land. So when I looked at, um, where's the outline for today? Is there a, a what's, what was the title of my speech? <laughs> Growing health, maintaining your own independence. Yeah. Yeah, just let me read that out. Don't worry, I'm, I, I'm aware of this. I just, I just want to reiterate it. It's a way of... <laughs> See, it's a way of, of lulling you into a false sense of, uh, you know, insecurity. And, and I have to do a bit of this because there's nothing better than getting the first gig in the morning after the celebration the night before. <laughs> and I get this a lot because it's kind of like, yeah, well, you've got to fire them up for the last day because if energy is waning a bit. So growing health, maintaining your own independent state of health is a political responsibility. Everything I spoke about then is health. Everything that I spoke about in that welcome is about health. It's about that connection to country which builds a presence, it builds a stability and it builds an understanding. So it's health of mind, health of spirit and soul. So I wanted to share that experience because it, it's very easy to talk about welcome to country and. It, it's, it's been sort of, now you'll hear it at events and sometimes it feels a bit sort of like, oh, well, we've just got to tick that box. But when you talk about a welcome, you realise that what was the welcome before, for you to get here to Young, you had to go through towns, you had to go through people's land and you stopped because you weren't driving fast, you stayed overnight. Like, John, you stayed over in Goulburn, you would have stayed with people, you would have been welcomed by people, then you move on and you move on. So the welcome to country and, and, and the being in a place is about what that is about. It is about welcome to our land. We're here in Young. I've come from Sydney. I'm going back to my country this afternoon. So health, I mean, health is a big, health is a big topic. And as a topic in a group that's working on everything that's in these three days, you know, this is, this is not the mainstream. So from a health point of view, there's elements that show that we're up against it. You're pushing against the tide. But as I said, in terms of that description of current, remember that just because you're going with the flow that you don't necessarily want to go with, it's just going to take you to another eddy and spit you out where you need to be. I know I'm getting into the analogies now, but that's just to keep you on the edge. I want to share with you a few things about what's going on at the moment. Because, you know, we're in a group like this and you look at the statistics outside and it's almost a bit of a siege, you know, like we know that this is the right thing to be doing for the soil and for the planet, but we're up against all of those statistics that Rhonda shared. But I want to give you a couple of stats out of my diary to give you an idea of where this information, where this movement is. These two weeks. So two weeks of things that are going on. 
I'm just going to run you through them because you are part of this. Every one of you are part of this. Even though you might have a farm here on the outskirts of Harden or Young or Cooter or whatever it may be, you are part of this. And everything that I do and everything that you do, like that river, it's all interconnected. So when you know that these things are going on, it builds that spirit and that knowledge that you're not out there batting away feeling like you're up against it. Let me go through a few of these. And they are so intimately integrated with health, soil and compost that I can't separate them. Sydney Food Fairness Alliance have three different events coming up and that's all about awareness of our food. Sunday Waverley Council Sustainability Awards for people and their gardens growing things. I was a judge for it. You should see the number of community gardens. They're exploding and people gardening. Sunday afternoon, Parramatta Eco Living Festival. When I talk about vocabulary, presence, constant changing of the paradigm. Parliament House on Tuesday, there's a food security summit for World Food Day in Parliament House talking about the physical, social and emotional needs of food. And that's at Parliament House. There's a sustainable communities plan for Sydney City looking at creating sustainable communities. Sydney Uni on Friday, all of the, the, the ag department up there, um, young farming graduate, graduates looking at where to from here and the future of farming. Of course, young composting conference. ABC Garden Club, I presented a, a no dig garden workshop for the ABC staff. Karonga Special School doing a seed saving workshop as part of um, Vandana Shiva's seed awareness uh, fortnight. And that's another talk tonight for Global Seed Freedom, which is on in Redfern. Food and city design, the, the relationship between food and cities at University of New South Wales. Sunday afternoon, there's a paddock to plate, meet the farmers in Glebe, pay $175, have dinner, all food, the farmers are there talking. That's you. That's you guys. That's your voice talking to people. But what I want you to see in all of this is the different levels. Okay, $175, not everyone's going to go for that. But that's another level of mover and shaker that can make connection to you here on the land. Transition Bondi, talking about a transition to a world without inputs and inputs in city life, inputs in farming life. It's a good living festival at Mamre Homestead in a, in, in a week. F and, th now, and then there's these ones. These are the other ones you need to know about because you don't know about it on the fast break. This is a group of young people. They get together at the Powerhouse Museum once a month on a Friday and they have five speakers who talk for five minutes. A bit like TEDx, but you've got to get something across in five minutes. And that, they're the exciting ones because you've got to go, right, cut to the chase, pan the gold out in the bottom, get it five chunks and throw them at people. <laughs> that's, you know, that, that's really exciting. YFM, Youth Food Movement. They have real food nights, R-E-E-L, where they have films, everything from f um, Food Inc. to Joel Salatin's stuff, all, all the different environmental and, and, and um, current films, but the projectors run on bicycles. And so six people, so there's the projector, there's six people over here and you just get on now and then and they, they cycle. But with that they have the stalls like this and they bring that awareness. They're now having a bicycle ride in a week or so where they ride to all the different community gardens, have picnics, look at them and so on. People's food plan. Through um, looking at the food plan that's being done by the government and saying, well, yes, that's who's on that? The big players who are driving the direction of that. So they've said, no, we're going to have a people's food plan. There's a meeting about that. There's been two meetings about that. Wild, wild Weeds, Diego, he's running workshops along the Cooks River. Beams, the Beams Festival in Chippendale. That was art in the streets. They closed the streets and had art because this is art. What you do is art. You turn 
you build soil, that's art. Making compost is art. And we need to change that perception. Otherwise, you know, people go, oh, well, the, you know, there we are, that's, that's compost. And unless someone's going to present it, you, you know, and dance around a bit, people are just going to go, Pfft. But suddenly when you take it as an art thing and you think about what you do as art, you think about it as an expression, you think about it as something that is leaving legacy, then you can present it with a new light. And that happened in, in the streets of Chippendale. I went there and did some presentations <coughs> and I just said, the world's a big container and who says you can't have containers? And, I, and, and so I did little 10 minute presentations. I had soil there, I had bags. I just go, so who says you can't see the world as a container? That building's a container. Sorry, Martin. Um, what about this bag? <laughs> Pour soil in there, bang, stick some, stick some rocket seedlings in there and say, off we go. I'm taking my lunch with me. <laughs> I had a little trolley bag and I walked along. I got the kids involved. I said, would you like to come for a picnic with me? Yeah, here, spread the rug. Put the trolley bag down, open it up. There's veggies growing in there. I said, let's have our picnic. Two bits of bread, boom. Ch -ch -ch. Messing with the paradigm. Messing with the mind. Keep Australia Beautiful campaign. They got more awards, more things going on. That's two weeks. Can I ask one question? Yeah. I bet Costa tries to be at every one of those. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, well, look, actually, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, no, I can't make the Parliament House one because I'm presenting uh, an in conversation with Michael Mobbs in his sustainable house. But the, the other one in there that I'm going to uh, next Friday is to Penang. And there's a compost. Well, it came out of a compost event and I met the, the Minister for, for Environment up there and he's got, he and his wife have got a vision and they're using Girl Guides. So imagine that. Think about that as a network. They're using the Girl Guides and they're creating a campaign called Eyes on You. And they're using the kids to manage waste separation in the streets, in the schools, and the kids are the monitors and the controllers. Think about that for power. They're then providing the inputs for what you guys need. So suddenly, we get this turnaround. You bring food in, you take compost out. You bring input, the city gives you the output. We change the perception, we change the vocabulary. I'm doing a thing at my local school where, we, where, where I, I said to them, there is no such thing as the word rubbish anymore. It's called resource recovery. We put four resource recovery stations in the school. Vocabulary, no rubbish, there is no such thing. That will then go into compost. But all the growers markets that are going on in Sydney, farmers come in, Systems are being set up and I'm working with people to set up systems. So if you're bringing your truck in, you take the compost out. So we reduce these things. But that's just two weeks. That's two weeks. And, and I, I wanted to share that with you because that's healthy. <laughs> that's very healthy because it's across multiple platforms. It's across artists. It's across the Fooderazzi. You know, people that are really into their food. It's across people that are into the transition movement. It's at the, it's, it's at the university. It's at the schools. It's at the councils. It's at the, the advocacy groups. It's across the board. This is bubbling and simmering around. And it's really important that you people out here know about it. Because if you don't know about it, you feel like you're just pushing away against the tide. But every bit of good work you do, I can take with me, you can take with you, and fold it into these currents and eddies that are working away against, the, against what has been the mainstream. I like to change even the thinking. If we keep representing it at the mainstream, then in our mind it is. I prefer to say it has been the mainstream. There's enough stats come from all the speakers, even though I wasn't here, to say that that paradigm is done. It's done and dusted. 
but like a sandstone arch, I look at it like that. Like the sandstone arch, it's falling down. As it falls down, it gets stronger. But everything we're doing is just chipping away at the mortar. Chipping away at the mortar, chipping away at the mortar. We only need one block to move and it's gone. And it's getting to that point because it's not just you and me and us in this room, it's all those people. They're hacking away at the mortar and it is going to collapse. There's no doubt. If we don't talk about it like it's going to, it won't happen. And this talk needs to generate outside, <laughs> beyond, beyond your farm gates, beyond, beyond this conference. And that's what the conference is about. Like I said, it's great to get up <laughs> and share the conversation. But the thing I love is that there's a video up there and that can be used to go out to people that can't be here. Not everyone can be here. Not everyone can make it to all of those things. Um, Mm. That's nice. So, so as a theme, I love the fact that, you know, when you're just thinking, things come. I was making my cup of tea and this was just handed to me. And I'll read it out because it's just nice. When, 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 you, when you're comfortable in what you're doing, and that's the reason why I talk about this stuff, so that you don't feel that it's uncomfortable. What you're doing is not uncomfortable. What you're doing is the path. And I, I was just standing there, some, this was handed to me by a person's unknown. And it says, we can, find nature, we can find nature outside us only if we have first learned to know her within us. Rudolf Steiner said that probably about 80 or 90 years ago. What's the point of that? The point is everything we're talking about here is health. But I look at it across the entire spectrum. So the work that I do is community, community-based health. But it's all about aperture. If I talk about community, what, what community am I talking about? Oops. You know, working in television, I've got used to not scratching myself because it's a great way to see who the soundo is in the room. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Goes like that. But aperture, aperture is what it's about. So here in this group, we're a certain aperture. If I talk about a community garden, you, yes, we can talk about the young community garden down there at the church opposite the pub and say, yes, that's going out to a certain aperture of the community. But I, I, people try and ask me for definitions of community garden. And I say, well, you growing a vegetable patch in your yard or on the farm, well, that's a community. That's your family community. Talking about initiatives to grow humus, to grow food and crops and fuel, as we are here, this is a big community. So think about everything that we do as an aperture perspective. And when the more you can play with that aperture, the more resilient and flexible we can be. Seeds, because it's seed freedom fortnight, everything I think about at the moment relates back to seed. And I love it because seeds are just an aperture. Seeds, seeds move and grow. I mean, you all understand seeds. But again, it's perspective on seeds. I love the fact that I can be given a seed like this from someone in Tasmania. It's 80 years in Tasmania. But then it's had 10 years in South Australia. And then when I planted in Sydney, it's then got the Sydney experience. Everything is about building resilience soil carbon going into the detail, if we want to go right down into the detail, that's resilience. When I plant that seed in Sydney, it becomes Sydney. That seed package there, whilst it's valuable to have the seeds, when you talk about the future, 
a real valuable seed bank is one that's in the ground. Because it's fine to put them all away, but then you bring them out and there's been a change in conditions. That change is not just from one year to two years, that's hundreds of years. Then you bring that seed out and it's going to shit itself. Excuse, oh, excuse me. It will. Whereas we keep these going, keep, keep them building into the conditions slowly, then their aperture is not all of a sudden, Whoa, it's snowing in Goulburn in October. They're, 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 boom, they're, they're done. They're absolutely done. So in everything we do and everything that I look at, I like to do this so that I can take the concept of what you're talking about with compost and relate it directly to here. And I love doing that because it freaks people out. I say, you are, you, uh, what's your name? Dave. Dave, you are just a composting system. Your, your, your body is a composting system and, un, and as you understand that better, then if this is working, this works. So everything that you do, th th this is, you guys are, like I said last night, I, I kind of like this. You, you guys are the undertakers of life. <laughs> Can you imagine black suits? There's a coffin. Lots of dead material. And then you open it up and start splashing around humus, <laughs> which is life. So all you guys are doing is trucking in the dead. I think we should join this up. And that, that's, that's what I love. This is the opportunity. We've got to talk about what we do, cross industries. So like I did with the Beams Art Festival and Make It Creative with Art, we've got to get representatives of, of this, this group. You've got to get into the uh, funeral and crematoria organisation and start playing with them and saying, we're together. We're all together. We're all undertakers. <laughs> because whether you're trucking someone in in a hearse to compost them, or whether you're trucking out tons of stubble or whatever it may be to turn into life, because that's a thing. I mean, the, the, the funeral people truck it in, but you don't see any life coming out. That's kind of a dead end. <laughs> it's just a boom. Whereas you guys are trucking in death and then you're driving out with life. And look, I like playing with this because if you can think about it differently, then you can appreciate just what you have in your hand and you can spread that information. You can share it. You can explain it to people with the facts that all of you specialists here have so that you can bolster the facts. But to get in the door, you can't bang on the door with the stats. Because it's... It'll be Marcel Marceau. Where's the door? But if you go in there and say, look, uh, I'm here to collect the dead, you suddenly change the paradigm and you make it fun. See, the big fella upstairs is ringing in. <laughs> saying we've got some dead to pick up. And I mean, I play with this. I play with this in the city. Because that's where all the output is. That's where, you know, we've got tons and tons of it. Councils around the country are going, oh, we've got to pay and people are, getting, people, are, people are getting upset that they have to pay to get rid of this stuff. But we've got to watch those zones too because certain organisations are getting into that and they're getting their, their, their head into the trough on multiple levels. So when I say health is a political... What did I say? <laughs> Is a political responsibility. By God, it's a political responsibility. And we have to see it like that. But the political responsibility, that, that, I'm not saying, okay, you've got to go and join up. And, you know, uh, as you're saying, I mean, you've, you've had a crack at, at doing the politics and so on. But I say start with the politics of self and, and area of influence. Because the ripples that you get out of that are more important than standing in front of the machine as it drives over the top of you. Every little bit you do ripples out and then as a group it ripples out even further. 
So, and, and it is political. If we don't make these statements, you know about the challenges that are facing our landscapes at the moment. And if we just stand by idle, it's not just going to be OK. It's, it's, and, and I mean, I'm, I'm not, as you know, I'm not one to take, like, take to the corner and sit down and go, oh, gloom and doom. But we do need to recognise that we have to push influence into different areas. But we can't push that influence if, into different areas if we're not pumped up about what we're doing. We've got to be pumped up and recognise that what we're doing <laughs> is something with great momentum. And that shift is happening through all of those things that I talked about, and particularly through kids. Kids are having exposure to this stuff through lots of positive and innovative school programs, both junior school and high school. Jim down at the school, he's doing wonderful things. But you know, in saying that, and as much and all as I could tout the school garden and say school gardens are fantastic and it's all going really well, we've got a situation in Queensland at the moment where they are closing down the TAFEs, full stop. Full stop, they're closing down the places of education. That is political and that, my friends, is bloody serious. Because we're, uh, as a community, a, and yes, it's wonderful, isn't it? We're gonna sell this prime land off and we're gonna you know, bring this bu budget back into balance. Where are you gonna find room for land in cities and it'll happen the same here because if they close the cities down, the country's done too. Do you realise that, that uh, the ag school out at Richmond didn't take any, any ag students this year? They did not take ag students this year for the first time ever. Just absorb that for a second while I get a colleague of mine. Just in case you didn't hear what I said, there were no ag students at an ag school. It's finished. When you close down an institution, budgets move. To try and get those budgets back, it's impossible, exactly. But not only are they shifting the budgets, in Queensland at the moment, they're shifting the buildings as well. So even if, even if you sort of say, oh, well, that, that wasn't really a good idea, let's kind of dust, dust the, the blackboard down and, and reopen. They're long gone. The developers have lined up. They've got their eyes on them. Beautiful two-bedroom exclusive apartments. For who? Like, there were no students enrolled at the ag school in Sydney. That, I could say it again, but I won't. Come here. Got a grip? Knocking my notes around. Okay. I was doing a talk at Sydney City Council recently and I had her here and they had one of those microphones that catches the sort of about a metre or two. And I was doing what I do out here and getting a bit fired up. And as I got fired up, she was Oh, that's kinky, by the way. I didn't introduce her. She was, she was standing there, and as I got fired up and she heard it, it was like... <laughs> but look, what's the point? What's the point? It's about how we value things. And like I said last night, when we talk about the vocabulary of a chicken, the first thing we think of is an egg. The first thing I think of is fertility. The first thing I think of is processing waste into this stuff, which builds everything. This is, she's, a, she's an undertaker herself. She undertakes to turn output into input. But it's how we look at things. And I use her as an example because, you know, the egg to me is 
merely a byproduct. It's a bonus, and if we get them, we get them. And you know, from a gardening aperture, people are constantly ringing up and saying, "Oh, because my chickens aren't laying." Because, and and it's, I sort of say, "Well, imagine proportionally." So she, she gives off an egg about that big, so one, three, four, five, six, so seven times. So, so that would mean imagine laying an egg the size of your head every day <laughs> for two hundred. So, so, but, but imagine that. You, you have to produce that. As you had to, you, your body has to create those, collect those inputs, hatch that thing every day, right? Every freaking day for 240 odd days straight. And so then you get to a point where you shed the feathers because it's time to renew. And so you've got to put energy into the feathers. What happens? People are going, oh, my eggs are off the lay. I say, you can have, darling, you can have eight weeks to rebuild your feathers and have a little bit of a holiday and just kick back. So perception, perception. She does her thing, but it's how we see it. What's she thinking? What's she thinking at the moment? Her perception is very different to when she's in the coop. Um, is there food? <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's going there. Is there food? And that's it. We use the materials around us. We use the resources. They are an incredible resource. And they help to build message, particularly in the areas that I work. How are we down for time, Rhonda? Um, we have got... Well, it's, uh, so give you ten minutes. Ten minutes. OK, that's good. So what I'm... I suppose what I'm getting at is... We've got a lot more than we think. But what's lacking is the story that connects everything that we're doing. And I suppose what I'm saying is work on the story. Work on how we share this information. Because it's the information and its packaging and the story that creates engagement. Because if you create a story of how you can drive change in the world with what you have, we can always think, oh, well, when I get this, it's going to be better. When I get that. Just gather information. Coming here, you're going like that. You're opening perception but you're building information to build a story because it's all about a story. I could have talked about, I could have gone right into the health implications and everything to do with the gut and the gut biology and so on and so forth, but it just needs, we just need the connection, the story so people get into it. So what I want to do now, in terms of that story, I just want to flick through some slides to just spark some story ideas. Some I may talk about, some I mightn't. This is it. Uh, now, is that little doobly going to work? Oh, cool. Yeah, cool. <laughs> this is on Taranaki Farm down in, in, um, in Victoria. And that's a mobile chicken tractor <laughs> based on Joel Salatin's work, doing amazing things. Where this one is a fertility machine that comes behind the cattle, spreads the manure, takes up all the fly larvae, gives them the protein, spreads their manure, which then fights with the manure of the cattle. So you, 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 you've got conflict. And the more conflict you have, the better. You can hop down. Come on. Let's go for a wonder. What is? What is the vision? How far do we look? Yeah, that's all right, because I gave a grain, and that'll just sit on the top, and I lift it off. Except for when I, was, I had her at, at, at a presentation. Yeah, I'll take it with me. Except for when I had her at a, a, a Canada Bay Council Environment Awards, and she was doing fine. She did a couple of poos, but it was nice and dry. I took it off. But the, the, the table settings were wheatgrass, and people were <laughs> offering them to her. And then about half an hour later, I saw things like this, and I looked at it, and it was like, Bleh. 
and I was cleaning it up and there was all these things and it was a Chinese restaurant and I could see the chefs coming after her. So I had to lock her in the cage and keep the cage close to me. Okay. This is building a, an aquaponics garden system in a school. Inputs, secondhand materials, simple system. But it's, where is it? It's right in the middle of the school. As soon as you walk in, bang, suddenly the dialogue is, what's growing? What's happening? Where do we put the priority? It's nice looking. It's growing food. The kids come out, they do testing. They have to do water testing, they have to look after the fish. Vertical gardens, talk about vertical gardens. All the concepts can be there in something as simple as that. What about just growing, growing food in a bale? Squashing the bale together like that, pulling it real tight, putting some compost in, planting it. Aperture, again, simple. People go, oh, but I can't grow something until I get a corrugated iron garden bed because they're, they're told this is how you do a garden. Rubbish. Look at the options. And there's the garden in that bed. 94-year-old lady, still gardening. Thinking, look at that. I mean, that, you, that's a toilet system and, the, and you wash your hands and it goes into the system and then flushes the toilet. So, you know, I, I mean, I've just got there just to mess with you a bit because we, we're so used to, oh, well, that's what we do. Yeah, or one of these, whatever. So you change from that to that. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> that, was, that was Mr. Olympathon. And again, that's about getting kids fired up. You just got to fire them up. This flow form. This is all about water, aerating the water, understanding of that. I could talk about biodynamics if I come out and say, oh, Whereas this way, I talk about it and then people ask a bit more, I, I flick them a reference and then they're in. Whereas if I talk about things like key line and biodynamics and permaculture, oh, the P word, or, you know, oh yeah, I know about that, that's hippie trippers up on the north coast and I know about key line and yeah, that was some, some swales that didn't really, like, but you get it out there, you show people and then they can go back into it. Ha! Huh. This is here in Young, the launch of the community garden. And look at it, old roofing that would have gone to the tip. Oops, who's that? It's me. <laughs> that was just out on... Um, uh, who's got the fun? Who looks after the church there? Mm, yeah. You know, <laughs> the Reverend. Yeah, that, that, I should have... <laughs> That was, thanks, thanks Rhonda. <laughs> that's on video too. <laughs> that's, that's been recorded. That's been recorded forever. Four pots, broken, chipped. Four colours. That's at um, the school up the road here. Uh, oh, no, nah, it's, it's on the outs. <coughs> Moringa, yeah, Moringo. There we are. Welcome to the Young's Community Garden. I like this one. I was talking to the kids about it. I said, you could look at that garden bed and say it's Humpty Dumpty piece of garden bed. Why don't we buy a better one? Well, for a start, that, that corrugated iron that's probably 40 or 50 years old is stronger than the corrugated iron that you'd get brand new. Um, why put it in the tip? And then I said, well, you can look at that and say, oh, yeah, you've got posts there because you've got to cover them because they're all different sizes. I just sprayed a little bit of pink paint on there and say, hey, aren't those bolts expressive when they've got a pink head? It's just ways of seeing. Okay. This is one of my big projects. 
and this is about bringing farming to the city. That's the verge outside my house. That's in Bondi. That distance from the top of the street to the end where the driveway, the driveway's about here, that's 150 square metres of land. Okay, it's not big on the, the, the levels that you guys and girls have here, but 150 square metres of land in Bondi, can you imagine what that would cost? I got it for nothing. There it is. What, it, what is it? It's a waste, well, it's, I, I didn't see it as a wasteland. There's some wonderful weeds in it, but there's not grass. But how do you see that verge? Through what tunnels do you see the verge? Sorry, sometimes the, when it goes into a new system, it all gets, the slides somehow go out, but I'll get back to the verge. This was a school in Chatswood for immigrant kids. They come here as soon as they arrive to learn English for two terms. That was the opening courtyard. I got, I did a no-dig garden with bales around the outside so that, again, the growing's right in front of them every time they come in the school. Look at the patterns, there's patterns everywhere. This was in Tasmania, they wanted to plant a row of, of, app, of uh, apples. I said, well, why don't you plant two rows, put an arch over the top and turn it into an arbor so that in 10 years it's gonna have, let's walk through. Topri, town in Tassie, is just thinking. How do we bring people into the town? Oh, put some tapery in the streets. Now people go there, buses go past. That's that same area outside the school with the no dig going on. We put green manure in there. See the bales? This took, this took an hour and a half with lots of kids. There's the green manure that came up. We chopped that green manure down and then planted straight into it. The veggies went ballistic. But that's right in the heart of the school and they all saw it. Within two weeks, we had this growing, not even two weeks. That's building that soil matrix, that's living. You know that the microbial activity is underway we chopped it down. This is back to the street verge. What we're growing there, we're not only growing food, but we're growing a community. And that's changed the street within two months because, okay, we started out, we put newspaper down, we put leaves, we put all, uh, all no dig, all different inputs from the street, bar some manure and some loosen. Built up to about that high. Of course you get challenges, some people, two people in the street decided after they saw that, why is cost of turning the street into a farm? So that was all right, we, it was good to have that challenge. It's not everyone's able to get their head around that stuff. I used the chickens, I got permission from the council to use a chicken tractor. See the chicken tractor, it's an old desk, a couple of rails, a wheel, a door on the outside. You put that on a street and it's a magnet. It brings people together. First the kids come, then the adults come. The adults are standing around the table. They go, oh, g'day, what's your name? Rod. Yeah, what number are you in? Oh, 17. Oh, I'm in 48. Yeah, mate, are these are your kids? Yeah, fantastic. Isn't it great? Community builders. She's a community builder, not just a fertility maker. These are the kids planting out at that school. This is us planting out on the verge. Questions? Oops. There's the girls ripping up the nature strip, one nature strip at a time. Imagine getting the green light with a council to, to, to create, uh, to have a chicken tractor on the street. But then that's precedent for councils around the country. So every precedent that you set, I use, and every precedent I set, you can use. Look at that. that, that that's them doing their job. And they're happy. And I had some posts on Facebook, oh, Costa, how can you put chickens in there? That's cruel. And I go, yeah, hang on, don't jump the gun. Have a look at that. They are happy as. They don't want to go in at five o'clock. They want to stay out there ripping it up. This was a herb garden. I could have created a herb garden, but what I did, I said, oh, let's call it a herb maze. 
and all I did was plant it in such a way that it was the shape of a maze. Suddenly you say to someone, oh, have you seen the herb maze? They go, oh, what, a herb maze? Where, where is it? Whereas if I said, oh, and there's a herb garden at the top of the hill, they go, oh, yeah. Herb maze, where's it? Where's the fucking herb maze? Look at that, there's the herb maze. And uh, has this got a little pointer? Oh, in the centre, thanks, Martin. And you walk up there between the lavender and the sage, then you come through the passion fruit daisy between the rosemary and the, and the uh, tansy, then between the basil and the love's joy, then up between the curry plants, and then back, and then you come in there in the middle, there's lots of pickable, edible, pickable herbs. But, yeah, just difference. Oh, there she is, she goes everywhere. That's at a street garden in Redfern, doing a workshop. And there's the street boxes. Because you've got to deal with, you've got to deal with organisations. You know, this, this is so that, you know, car doors can open, palava, palava. Let's just get them going until they, the, the current becomes so strong that the policies and the guidelines change because the people want the change. Look at that, that's another edible outdoor room in the city, right in the heart of the city. Putting it in people's faces that you can grow stuff. Planting some more in the street. Look at that after three weeks. So you've got everybody driving past, going, what are you putting on them? Okay, sunlight. <laughs> Bit of water. Oh, really? Bringing what you do to the city making people understand that they should be growing this stuff there and that water, which is all they are, water and some minerals should not be transported with sunlight from thousands of years ago from the top of Queensland and the top of Victoria to bring to you to end up putting them in your fridge composter and throwing them out. Why can't we all be growing? We, our climate here can grow this all year round. Oops. What's that, five minutes? Or is that it? No, five oh, okay, five minutes, that's good. That was the big cold front coming into Naruma. And then the food. These two girls have a garden out in the Adelaide Hills, not much rainfall up there. They go to the supermarket for incidentals once every five or six months. And that's part of their larder. This is again the verge. We put paths in, so I put, I put mulch paths so that we could... The paths are access so that car doors can open and people can walk along the path and then there's another path through the middle there. But that, having the paths there with the wood chip means that all the activity in the wood chip and all of the all of the benefits that, that we could look at it as a path, I look at it as a highway. It's a highway for all of the underworld, <laughs> for the underworld to take over. And that's what we want. Oh, we're putting a wood chip path in. Mm. We're releasing the underworld onto the verge. Talk about it like that, people get interested. There's the herb maze. And you know what that looked like at the beginning, just that slope. We were looking at it from there, looking up, but that's out of my window. That's why people go, oh, where's the maze? And it's grown quite a bit since then. I interviewed Indira and I do. She's got a balcony garden. She's a balcony farmer. She's got a balcony garden that's five metres, right? And I did this five metres. One, two, three, four, five and she's got pots on this side, so that's 300 millimetres wide, and she's got a couple of hanging ones off that. In the season, she harvested 77 kilos of produce off that balcony. And I like that because she goes, there's her shed, and that's, that's worm juice in there, which is kind of cool. Look at this one. <laughs> Look at this man, man there. <laughs> right in the middle. That's up in... Um, uh, up in... Uh, uh, Coughs. 
at one of the Steiner schools there. And this was a big, um, a big garden that we built. But look at what it does. Look at all the kids. Oh, that must be it. Okay. Um, so yeah, what's the point? <laughs> what's the point of all that rambling? The point is that what you saw up there was expressions of health. It was expressions of health from the level of the path and what that path was going to build for the rest of the garden so that we got that matrix, that highway beneath the ground. We had above the ground, we had health. We had food, kids are coming up. I had two people visit The Verge the other day and we just happened to finish shooting. And there was a guy there and his, and his wife and while we were talking, it had got dark, suddenly a young girl came up the street and she had one of those lanterns on and she was looking around and the lady said to me, um, who's that, do you know her? I said, oh, I'm one of the kids from down the street. And she said, uh, and then I, I said, well, what do you want? She said, oh, I need a bit of coriander. I said, oh, it's winter, there's no coriander. I said, oh, actually, no, there's a feral one up here. That, and we went, I said, how, I picked a few leaves. I said, how, how's that? She said, yeah, that's heaps. And she walked off. The lady started crying. She started crying because she said, this is real. Like, this is real. This is actually happening. It wasn't just TV. I said, no, this is, people come up and they, they do that. That's, that, that's health. That's health for her future. That's health for that family meal. And that's health for that community. And it's health because of the fact that I can take that photo and share it. And now I've polluted you all. And you can take it and share it. Because what we're talking about is ground up. But out of the ground comes those other areas of health that are equally as important as the details that we're discussing here. And when we combine the two, then the information that you have will reach here and make the shift that's needed for those eddies to then become the current. So, Oh, Kinky's been dropping a few <laughs> deposits. I'll take them to the community garden on my way out. So I'd finish by saying, don't underestimate anything that you do. It's all connected. I want to know your stories. Tell your story. Put it out there. Put it out there on social media. Put it out there in the pub. Put it out there around the family table. Put it out there in every which way you can. Share it with younger people because you know what I spoke to a little earlier about what's happening. We need that information to go out. We need to inspire kids with things like kinky, with people like kinko, with Animals, oh, sorry, people, anyway. Um, we need to inspire the next generation. And they can't get your stories if you don't tell it. And healthy stories build healthy communities. And they build a healthy you. Because then that builds self-esteem. It builds pride. And it builds a compelling dialogue. And if you create a compelling dialogue, then that helps me. And it helps Martin, it helps every single one of us to turn this eddy into a rampaging torrent, which is then the norm. And which my goal would be, ultimately, that there is no longer conventional and biological and organic and all these camps. It's just, that's how we do it because it's all about health. Enjoy the rest of the day.